Okay, in this video we're going to do example 6, Oregon State Employees Retirement System, and example 7, looking at income tax. And for each example and each homework section, again, we'll, we'll do these four steps as usual. So let's start with example 6. And again, you can print this off from the website, or you can just write it down, or just read it, probably fine. So, Oregon State Employees Retirement System says the method of calculating the compensation paid to general service retired employees of Oregon State is yearly retirement income is 1.5% times the number of years of service times the average of the last three years of salary. So that's three numbers being multiplied there, isn't it? And then it says, is this retirement income a linear function of the number of years of service? And of course, we're not just going to answer this question, we're going to take these four steps. Okay. So first step is we've got to make an input-output table. What do we put in and what do we, what's our input and what's our output? What are we going to calculate from what? Let's see, the last line says, is this retirement income a linear function of the number of years? Number of years. Is this retirement income a linear function of the number of years? Well, to be honest, when I look at that, all I can see is one number. And it's hard to make, to figure out what's going on here at all, isn't it, really? But um, let's just take this line to see what's going on here. The yearly retirement income for this one of these employees is 1.5% times the number of years of service. Let's just look at that. So we'll put in number of years times the average of the last three years of salary times 40, uh, sorry, I'll do $50,000, sorry, $50,000. Oh, uh, uh, I'm just going to put that in as a word first, first of all the average of the last three years of salary. So that's also called the final salary, by the way. Anyway, so um, the on the input-output, we want to figure out is the income, the yearly retirement income, a linear function of the number of years of service. Okay. So um, but we don't, oh, again, all we have is the 1.5%, so we've got to make something up. And I'm going to make up the final salary to be um, $50,000, okay? So our 1.5%, remember, is 1.5 over 100, 1.5 per 100%, and that's 0. Point what? What's that as a decimal? 0.15, right? So our income is going to be 0 0.015 times the number of years, right? Times the final salary, and I'm going to pretend that that's $50,000, right? Okay. So um, let's pick a number for number of years. What would be a, a nice number for a number of years that you've worked at a, a place? I guess you could say one or two or three. Um, just for fun, I'm going to do 10 years, and they're going to calculate the income, which is 15%, 1.5%, sorry, 1.5%, or one in other words, 0 0.015 times the number of years, in this case 10, times the average of the last three years of salary, or the final, or $50,000, right? So. So I've made up the 10 years that made up the $50,000, and I'm just going to multiply that and see what we get. Okay, So plug that in the calculator and see what you get. So 7,500, right? And now I'm going to make up, got to do four inputs and out four efforts. So I'm going to make up, say, 20 years then I'm going to do 30 years, and then I'm going to do 40 years. Um, so uh, after 20 years, what's the salary? What's the yearly income? A and what this means is uh, retirement income or yearly retirement income means you get seven and a half thousand each year. 
uh, after you retire, after you're 65 or whatever the age is. And um, depends on the generation a, a little bit, I think. But uh, so the number of years 20. What's the retirement income here? Again, it's 1.5 percent, 0.015, right? Times 20, right? Times 50,000. And what does that give? Use your calculator if you need to, and then calculate the. So, so that should be. Uh, I'll just do this one. That should be fifteen thousand, right? Then calculate the yearly retirement income for thirty years and forty years, and press pause on your on your uh, video, and do that. Okay, I hope you press pause. I'm going to do it now. It's just the same calculation. times 40 and then 30 okay and we put that in the calculator we get 22,500 and we get 30,000 right so just quickly on it let's understand what this means why not yearly retirement income means uh, if if uh, this employee worked for 20 years they would get 15,000 each year while they're retired like 15,000 at the age of 60 you know Five and 66 and 67, 68, or depending on what age you retire, it could be 60, so 60, age 60, 61, 62, 63, all the way until, until they die. So if the employee worked for 40 years, they would get 30,000 each year after they retire. So um, now, is this a linear function is the question. Well, we got to see if we have a constant growth rate. And... Um, I've made these inputs to increase by the same amount. These are increasing by 10 years each time, right? But I just want uh, to show you one thing here, that um, wh how much are these increasing by each time? 7,500 to 15,000 is how much more? 7,500, right? And 15,000 to this number is how much more? same amount isn't it and here to here is how much more that's the same amount again right so it does appear we have the uh, constant growth rate but the actual growth rate by the way or the actual average growth rate believe it or not is the change in the output over the change in input, right? Or change of input. Uh, or change in the function over change of the independent variable, is what your book might say, something like that. But change in the basically the actual calculation over the change in the 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 numbers that you put into the calculation is is what it means and uh, so our average growth rate each time uh like for this line to calculate the average growth rate it would be you know 7500 divided by 10 see it's it's this number over this number okay and this for this line it's 7500 over 10 each time it's 7500 over 10 which is 750 okay so the average growth rate for this um, for this function is in fact 750 dollars so the average growth rate equals 750 dollars and while we're at it why don't we give the meaning of this or can we yet or should we do something else first maybe I don't know but uh, you might be able to figure out the meaning there if you like um, basically let me put it this way what would the um, income be if you worked for 41 years calculate the income retirement yearly retirement income after 41 years that's just one year more than 40 years here right did you get it so it's 0 0.015, right, times 41, right, times 50,000, right? And that gives us 3 $30,750 dollars per year. So for every extra year worked, 
for, for that one extra year worked, you get an extra $750. That's what the actual $750 average growth rate means. That, see what I'm saying? So, and, and it shouldn't come as no surprise, because look, after 10 years, you get 7,500. I mean, 750 times 10 is 7,500, right? After 20 years, you get 15,000. I mean, 750 times 20 would be 15,000, right? And um, and we'll see that in the formula. We'll do a, do a cool thing with the formula now in a minute. But the meaning of this is, um, you, don't you get an extra $750 for each extra year that you work, right? Isn't that what the main name would be? Just you get an extra seven hundred fifty dollars, uh, you know, per year on your retirement for each extra year worked, right? So. To come up with a formula is the last thing we need to do. Find a formula. Um, you can, by all means, press pause and try and find a formula yourself. And let's just let's make life easy for ourselves and, and use this fifty thousand dollars. And I'm going to give you a hint uh, in in the homework to use a number in that too. Okay. So if we used fifty thousand dollars, what would the formula be? So basically, if, if you work for 41 years, we figured out that that's the amount you get per year, right? So my question is, if you work for X years, what would your annual retirement salary be? Or annual retirement income be, rather? Well, wouldn't it be 0 0.015? times what times x times 50,000 right and wouldn't that be uh, and 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 you know we can multiply these two numbers over here 0 0.015 times 50,000 I wonder what that'll give do you know already multiply those what do you get $750 right so we get 750 times X. So we said X was number of years, right? And income, let's call it Y. So the income Y equals 750 times X. Or in this case, the income equals 750, you know, times the number of years of service. And again, this 750 number is the average growth rate. And it, it means, you know, for every extra year you work, you get an extra $750 on your retirement per year, right? Okay. Okay, let's move on to example seven on income tax. One federal income tax schedule states that if you're married filing jointly and your taxable income is between this number and this number, 8,000 and 36,000, then you owe almost 900 dollars plus 15 percent of your taxable income over 8920 is the tax you owe a linear function of your taxable income if your taxable income is between these two numbers if so find a formula given tax ot as a function of taxable income i over that number okay so what i'm going to do is start with an actual income just to try and break this down for you and then we'll calculate some numbers and, and, and see what this is saying. By all means, press pause and try and figure it out yourself if you like. But basically, if your income is um, your taxable income is uh, between these numbers. So, I mean, we should start with taxable income, sorry your taxable income between these two numbers right so that's after all the deductions and whatnot but your actual taxable income so w let's take uh, 10,000 right let's say your taxable income is at 10,000 which is between these two numbers right um, then
your what 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 we need to do is figure out taxable income i that's over this amount, right? So what we want to think about is taxable income that's over the eight thousand nine hundred and twenty. Okay. So how do we figure that? Well, don't we just subtract, right? So you would just take ten thousand and subtract eight nine twenty, right? See where that came from? So the taxable income over this amount let's do a little table here I guess would be one thousand and eighty, right? For example, right? And then we want to think about tax owed. Is tax owed a function of taxable income over this? So what we're really interested in is the taxable income over that amount and the tax owed. Okay. So if your taxable income over this amount is $1,080, your tax owed is going to be what? you're going to owe this amount plus 15% of your taxable income over this amount, right? So you're going to own owe, sorry, 892 plus 15% um, of this number, 1080, right? So that's going to be 892 plus zero point what? What's fifteen percent as a decimal? Press pause and get that if you need to. Fifteen percent. Again fifteen percent is one fifteen per hundred. Fifteen percent. Zero point one five. Fifteen cents would look like this. Think about money, right? Okay, zero point one five. What does of mean in math? Of means multiply, right? So we're getting this number plus fifteen percent of this number. So that would be eight nine two plus what? We'll calculate that. Zero point one five times one oh eight oh and that would be a hundred and sixty two dollars. And then add that to the eight nine two, right? Oh, sorry, plus. So if we add these together we should get one zero five four as tax owed altogether, right? If our taxable income happens to be um twenty if twenty thousand dollars, right? What's the amount that's over the eight thousand nine hundred and twenty? Well, how much more is this than this? Don't you just subtract twenty thousand minus eight nine two zero, right? And that gives us, of course, eleven thousand and eighty, right? And the tax owed calculation is: you owe this number plus fifteen percent of your taxable income over this, which is this number, right? So you now need to pay eight nine two plus fifteen percent zero point one five fifteen percent of this number one one zero eight zero right which would be eight nine two plus and then calculate that zero point one five times one one zero eight zero right and add that to eight nine two. So this is one six six two, and if we add them, we should get two five five four, right? So let's do an input of we'll just do three. How about that? Thirty thousand, and do our taxable income over 
eight, nine, twenty, and then do this. So press pause and do these two calculations, see what you get. Okay, I'll do it now. How much more is thirty thousand than eight nine twenty? Just subtract them. Thirty thousand minus eight nine twenty gives us twenty one thousand and eighty, right? What's our tax owed? It is eight nine two plus fifteen percent of your taxable income over that number. Fifteen percent of this, this is your taxable income over that number, right? So that's 892 plus and multiply them, what do you get? Two one zero eight zero, right? 3162 and that gives us 4000 and 54. Okay. So we've got uh, three inputs anyway. Well, why don't we might as well do um, another one? Um, but we got to get a number in between these two. Why don't we do 35,000? Press pause and calculate the taxable income over this amount for 35,000 and the tax owed for 35,000. Hopefully, you can. Sorry. Hopefully you can get it by now. Okay, this is an extra 5,000, so it's 26,080. So the taxable income is 892 plus 15% of that. And in fairness, sometimes you might have a calculator that'll do the whole thing. 892 plus parenthesis, or sorry, plus, sorry, 0 0.15 parenthesis, 26080, press enter, 4804, right? Okay, now, let's answer the questions. We've done the table. I think we know what we're doing anyway. Um, now we'll figure out, is this formula linear? And one thing I want to note is, look, in the question, you see, we were asked, find a formula given tax owed T, okay, so that's T here, or sorry, tax owed is T, that's here, right, as a function of taxable income I over this amount. So the income is, the I is the income over that, so this is I here, right? Okay, so this is I, this is T, and we don't need this. That was just for fun. I just made those numbers up just so we could uh, we could see what was going on, right? But we want to see if this is a function, right? From here to here. Of course, from here to here would be would be a function too, because you're just subtracting anyway, or a linear function. Sorry. So we want to see if this is a linear function going from here to here. So we calculate the um, changes. And don't, don't forget the changes on the inputs. What's a uh, thousand and eighty to eleven thousand and eighty? How, how much more is that? That's or maybe maybe we should do it this way. Sorry, that is an extra ten thousand, right? What about eleven thousand and eighty to twenty one thousand and eighty? How how much more is that? That's an extra. 10,000, right? How about 21,080 to 26,080? That's an extra what? That's an extra 5,000, right? Uh, 1,054 to 2,554 is an extra what? You just subtract. You could just subtract them, couldn't you? 22554 two, five, minus 1054. That would be an extra 1,500. 2,554 to 4,054 would be an extra what? 1,500. So it's looking linear right now, isn't it? And going from here to here is what? How much more? Uh, clear, clear, clear. 48. 
oh four minus four zero five four. That would be an extra seven hundred and fifty, right? But uh, we need to remember that the average growth rate is in fact equal to the change in change of output or change in output over the change in input. Okay, so it's a division thing. So it's equal to um, this 1500 over 10,000. Uh, which of course is, what's 1500 over, oh sorry, 10,000. What's 1500 over 10,000? Should be 0 0.15, right? And it's also this should be the same as this one, this over this. 1500 over 10,000 is 0 0.15 as well, right? And what's 750 over 5,000? That's another one we look at, that change in output over this change in input, right? What does that give? Plug this in the calculator, it's also 0 0.15. So the average growth rate is in fact equal to the average growth rate is equal to 0 0.15 it's constant it's just the same number every time right 0 0.15 every time okay so that means that this is a linear function okay and if we get the formula tax owed would be what how do we calculate it if our input is 26,080 how do we calculate the output we go 892 plus 0 0.15 times 26,080 so my question to you is simple if the input is I what would the output be? Or x, doesn't matter, i or x, whatever. If the input is i, the output would be 892 plus what? 0 0.15 times i, right? And so we could say our tax owed t equals 892 plus 15% of the in taxable income over this amount. And I mean, it says it right here, look. You owe 892, tax owed equals 892, plus 15% of your taxable income over this amount. You know, 15% of taxable income over this. Right? In other words, I. So, T equals 892, plus 15%, 0 0.15. Of means multiply, multiply by I. Right? I is the taxable income that's over this amount. 